Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 69 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a brief look at cold water temperatures in winter and their effect on fish, carp in particular, and what I do or don't do to address them. The pond continues to be covered and the leaves continue to fall. The weather, ironically considering this episode's subject, has warmed up considerably this week and the pond's up to 10 to 11 degrees. Although, as I'll talk about later, temps at or just below that aren't necessarily better than ones at 5 degrees or below. All's well with the pond. As it's covered from the leaves and I'm only feeding a little, I've stopped using the pond vac weekly and filter cleans are pretty quick because there's increasingly less muck in them. So weekly maintenance is down a bit at the moment, which I appreciate. Thanks for everyone's likes over the last couple of videos. They've taken quite a lot of time to make and I appreciate any positive comments and likes and views. No idea what next week's video will be about. I doubt that you know what will have arrived, but the fisheries harvesting, so it won't be long now. I couldn't recommend subscribing enough so that you don't miss out on things when they do finally happen. Right, all done. It's time for the main topic and the cold times of winter. As a cold-blooded animal, fish are affected by the temperature of the surrounding water, which influences their body temperature, growth, food consumption and digestion, and other bodily functions. Therefore, water temperature is the most significant driving force in a fish's life, as its effects are more widespread than any other single factor. Although shorter-term changes, such as weather conditions, heavy rainfall, air pressure, etc., may influence fish for a day or two, Temperature has longer term, predictable and seasonal effects. Different fish species have their own ideal temperature range, within which it will grow most quickly. When able, fish will tend to seek out a move to warmer areas of whichever body of water they live in. In warmer water, fish will have a prolonged growing season and faster growth, but consequently can also have a shorter lifespan than in cooler water. Higher temperatures increase a fish's metabolic rate resulting in increased food consumption. It was long believed that carp overwintered motionless and without feeding at the bottom of the lake or pond or wherever they lived. Their behaviour has often been described as follows. They cluster together in shoals, they form a depression in the bottom and will pass winter there still and without feeding. This perspective has been challenged by a number of different pieces of research and individual experiences. Some have observed year-old carp showing some activity in water temperature at 0.5 degrees, as well as older fish on certain waters. Research into the movement of carp in winter shows that they do seek out warmer areas of their home, often based on depth but also areas that get more sunlight and where there was less flow. The research also showed that although they kept to these areas, they were still active within them, not remaining in a state of stupor and being completely inactive. Although there are opinions that carp stop feeding within a range of 4 to even 12 degrees, again research shows that foraging and eating continues, and carp have been observed to regularly forage even in water as low as 0.5 to 3 degrees. Most wild carp strains can survive long-term exposure to low temperature stresses at 0 to 4 degrees in the winter, although research has shown that acclimatization is vital in allowing them to do so, but if correct, they can adapt and survive. There are other potential harmful effects of prolonged cold weather, however. Temperature is known to affect the immunology response of fish, with changes within their environment influencing the properties of enzymes. Studies have shown that a decline in water temperature, especially a rapid decline, causes a drop in white blood cells, which in turn reduces their ability to fight ill health. Additionally, stress, 
whether due to environmental factors, injury or even fear, can cause additional and increased susceptibility to pathogens. However, just as carp acclimatise and increase their activity levels in cold temperatures, so can their immune system adapt and adjust in long-term extreme cold, as initial thermal stress is usually followed by a gradual compensation. This compensation involves the fish's immune cells adjusting to long-term hypothermic conditions and function as if this was the usual or normal thermal range. The important factor being that temperatures are stable for a period of time and that there are few other stresses for the fish to contend with. That isn't to say that their immune systems are as effective as during warmer months or that white blood cells are the only thing a fish needs to fight pathogens. However, Although those pathogens, parasites, bacteria, etc., stay active and can consequently impact the fish at temperatures lower than those that the carp's immune system will be at its best, there are still only few that can continue to be harmful throughout the lowest of temperatures, for example, below 5 degrees. It could be argued, therefore, that carp are at less risk from ill health at or below 5 degrees as long as the decrease in temperatures is not too rapid and then continues at a stable level than varying temperatures between 5 to 10 degrees when more pathogens will be active and effective, yet there will be a decline in the efficacy of the fish's ability to fight infections. So how do the carp in my pond present in winter and what do I do to help them? The water in my pond has dropped to a low of 0.5 degrees and in the coldest of winter months will be sustained at 1 to 2 degrees. In the three winters of the second version of my pond, I've not had any ice coverage, possibly due to the amount of water movement, as local natural ponds and lakes have all experienced some surface ice. Throughout these extremely low temperatures, I've never seen prolonged periods of inactivity from my carp or the rudd although the tench are more likely to be, however. The carp have never appeared to remain still for too long, occasionally lying still for a few minutes before then moving off and even foraging. Their behaviour also appears in keeping with the research. Drops in temperature do precipitate greater stillness, but this is temporary, and as long as the pond stays stable at this new lower temperature, the carp will then appear to recommence their slow patrols around the pond, and even eat occasionally. This has even occurred below one degree, where the mirror carp happily picked up two small wheat germ pellets that their owner, perhaps foolishly, threw in as a test. I've not seen the carp particularly favour the deeper parts of the pond in winter, although it should be taken into account that there's only about a 10 inch difference between the deepest and shallowest parts. Additionally, there's some debate about whether an average garden pond of four to five foot depth can sustain significant differences in water temperature. In larger lakes, the differences only really begin at about 1.5 to 2 metres. What appears to attract the carp in winter more are two other factors. Firstly, a lack of flow. As energy conversation is imperative, the less they have to spend to hold a position in the pond, the better. Last year it was the rear right corner, which coincidentally is also the shallowest area. The other attractive feature is sunlight. Both the rudd and latterly the carp will be drawn to the areas receiving sustained sunlight as they will obviously begin to warm up. So what do I do to manage the cold? I do very little to be honest, although my approach is somewhat governed by finance and balancing aesthetics and pragmatism. I don't, as some pond keepers do, move my pump from the bottom of the pond to a higher level to retain stable warmer water there. As I've said, I feel the jury's out on whether ponds of a similar depth to mine can hold warmer water anywhere, so I'm not sure it would help. Some pond keepers heat their pond. I can't, as I can neither afford a heater or afford to run one. Some other pond keepers cover their pond, either in conjunction with a heater or not. This cuts down on wind chill and retains some heat in the pond. I do cover my pond, but only with a tarpaulin, and only when there's snow or hail or heavy winter rain forecast. The rationale behind this is to prevent, 
as much as my resources allow, a more rapid decline of temperature. I have considered a more long-term rigid winter option, but there's other factors than money that have stopped me so far. As you'll know from September through most of December, I cover my pond with netting to catch leaves. My concern with also covering throughout the rest of winter is that my pond, and therefore my fish, would only be visible for half the year. Although it may be correct to say that their health is paramount, you do also need to observe them to keep them well. And on balance, it could be said that 20,000 leaves settling in the pond is a greater risk to a healthy environment than the cold. Which brings me to my main concern about my pond and water temperature. The extremely low temperatures, however much of a strain they can place on carp, are not my biggest worry. Research has shown that wild carp, which my species are, can acclimatise and cope with low temperatures, outside of their optimal range. My real concern is how long my pond stays in a range above 5 degrees and below about 10 degrees, where pathogens are still effective, but where the carp's immunity is impaired. I combat this as best I can with really cautious feeding in autumn and early winter and late winter and early spring to ensure at least that the water is healthy to avoid adding further stress to the fish. If I was to ever win the lottery or discover a rich relative I would heat the pond not to avoid winter altogether as I'm not sure that's totally beneficial although that could all be an episode all to itself but to have as short a period between 5 and 10 degrees as possible. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at winter temperatures. I have inevitably condensed some information and missed some out altogether, and I'm also happy to admit I may have stuff wrong. It's all quite complex and there's as many opinions about this subject as there is about most pond keeping topics. Feel free to share yours in the comment section below. One final point, if you're carp or koi, it is likely that a tolerance to cold and adaptability may not be as robust as more wild species. I've never kept koi, so I can't be sure whether they're more fragile or not, and what would be best for them. I'd also love to know your views on that. Thanks a lot for watching this episode of Keeping Water, I really do appreciate it. If you've enjoyed it, please think about subscribing, liking and sharing. I'm going to keep persevering with the GoPro over the next week, so hopefully I'll have some new fish footage to show you. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.